let's talk about the data dam component. I've brought this up in another video and I figured I might as well just share it again. It's a very sim uh, similar situation, um, but I do think it's a very important component to be aware of, um, especially for you know scripts like this. And I'm gonna explain why the data dam is so important. For context, we're looking at the Larkin Street substation expansion, uh, which is a case study I did. This is by TEF Design, and I did a little video where I built this algorithm to, to create the facade design of this building. So anyways, let's talk about why I'm using Data Dam. Well, everything in this section here is basically just to create these curves and a few other things, uh, but everything here calculates fair, uh, very quickly Okay, anything in, on this side of the script is generating in a few, uh, y you know, in a negligible amount of time, amount of t an amount of time that doesn't really matter to me, right? Very short amount of time, a fraction of a second, okay? But once we get into here, I start splitting surfaces, um, I sp especially over here, you know, this this component here is taking more than half a second, trim with B rep. Um, we have some lofts. Uh, the lofts, no, the lofts aren't that bad. It's really when we get over here, I start projecting. I start uh, doing a pipe, which takes almost half a second. And the fillet takes eight seconds to compute. And the point that I'm getting at here is we don't necessarily need to calculate this at, at, um, after every single parameter change. In this case, I actually want to I want to just edit these polylines that are showing up here right here and I don't and I'm going to be able to know whether the script is going to work or not just by looking at these polylines so I don't need to calculate I don't need to be filleting edges and doing all this and creating these patterns and doing the lofts and all that stuff so I want to have the ability to just uh, take a few seconds to you know make sure that my polylines are in the right position before I launch the rest of the script and I don't want to make, I don't want this, all this stuff to calculate uh, after every single change that I make. Okay, so when I start testing, which I'm not doing now, which is not, it's not connected, but when I start testing, I will plug in the data dam component into my relay. And my relay is there so that I only have to change one node. Okay, and now I have a data dam set up. So, so uh, let's see how that serves us. Okay, now when I start changing some of these parameters, uh, what should I change? I'll change these, I'll change the seed value, it'll give me a new value. Um, you can see that our old model is still there, and that might, you know, you can turn that off if you want. I actually kind of like it there as a reference. Um, but I'm changing my seed value, and I'm going to look at some different designs. Like, I know that this iteration is not going to work because I have these polylines that are crossing between two walls. And uh, my script is not set up uh, to do that. This script is a little buggy. I didn't spend the time to make it perfect because it's just a case study. It's not a real project. Um, you know, I don't like having this little tile here. Uh, even if it was a real project, I wouldn't want to have this little tile. I wouldn't want to make our fabricators making these little corner tiles. Um, and everything else is okay. But so what I'm going to do is I'll keep messing around with these polylines till I find an iteration that looks like it'll work. I think that one will work. Now all I have to do is move some of these around. Okay, I'm looking at my edge conditions. Okay, I think that will generate uh, um, successfully, uh, judging by just looking at these polylines. So now that I have an iteration that I want to test through the, the rest of my script, uh, I will open up my data dam and now, now I only have to wait for this on that one time that I open up the data dam, okay? And okay, so it did not, it did not work. It's because one of my tiles is too small. Uh, that's okay. Um, but now that my data dam is is closed again, uh, it, as soon as I start changing it again, uh, I don't have to worry about it doing that. You know, ten second calculation again. Uh, I can already just instantly go back and start trying out a new iteration. Um, because that the data dam is closed again. Okay. Uh, pretty sure this one will work. So let's try it again. Okay. Perfect. So we have a successful script and you know, the other thing that we could do, we could take this even further and we could put a jump, jump node 
I'll put one at my data dam and I'll put one of these nodes, you know, at my main editing center, which is probably going to be around here because that's where actually I'll put it around here because that's where most of our editing sliders are. And now I can quickly go in here. I can edit my domains. I can edit my seeds. And then I just have to, uh, ju I can quickly jump over to my data dam and I can, I can open the data dam and then go back to my editing center over here, my main uh, my main, um, yeah, the location of most of my e editing parameters, right? So, uh, that, that's, you know, I just thought I could bring up another example of the data dam because I don't use it too often, but when I do need it, it's super, super useful. We don't have to like set up a stream filter and stuff like that. The data dam is, uh, you know, really, really cool feature to have in grasshopper. All right. I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you're using the data dam or any of these components. I'm always curious uh, what, you guys, uh, what you guys are working on. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.